welcome back guys so in this video what we will do we will uh, take up our previous example from lecture 11 and we will do the schematic on ADS we will take care of all the non agility which might arrive when we will fabricate this circuit and then in our lecture 13 or next lecture we will do the optimization we will do the layout on ADS and then we will do the cost simulation or the EM part of our layout and then we will uh, compare both the result of schematics and cost simulation so this is the example and here they have already provided us with the s parameters and in our last video we have already gone through the design using serenade software so if you are interested in serenade uh, design then you can check out my last video so let's open ADS, uh, go to file, new and name your workspace and uh, this you can skip, uh, this will help us during our layout. So let us select it as micron, right click and create one schematic, schematic one. You can give any name, no issue. Okay, so first of all we need to check the stability and for checking stability what we do, we go to tools and you can see you can get smith chart, okay and there what we will do we will uh, enter the s parameter which is already given in our question so so for stability check go to circle and click anyone input stability or output stability and we have clicked and see it is uh, shown us this device is unconditionally stable so that means we don't need to do any extra work so now let's go to our main schematic and we need to choose one SNP box choose your file which I already uh, I made it from the experimenter given my question and I have in my previous video already explained how to make it uh, you just need to write it on your uh, notepad let me open and let, let me show you uh, so see this is your s parameter i have just written it there and this is the format uh, and this format are followed as of touchstone file okay so now what we will do we will uh, choose to terminal and we can directly type it here term g or what we can do we can uh, go to simulation s parameter and see we have here to one port and two port now see uh, what we put in between we put in between the matching circuits and we are using matching circuit why because we will have some specific gamma s or gamma l and those gamma s and gamma l are due to our specific gain requirement and e this example is for maximum gain and for maximum gain what we calculate we calculate gamma ms and gamma ml and gamma ms and gamma ml you can calculate it using these formulas okay and i have explained this formula just my previous uh, lecture relevant so you can refer that one and to simplify our calculation you can calculate it with your general calculator also scientific calculator but what we choose we actually wrote to an uh, matlab script and from that script we got the answer and we have positive negative and we have selected negative everything i have explained there why negative why positive okay so these are the value actually gamma ms or the gamma s for maximum gain and gamma ml for your uh, maximum gain uh, gamma ml value for maximum gain okay but if you have ads then you actually we have the liberty we don't need to follow this formula or we don't need to do any calculation in your calculator we can directly get it from actually roughly we can get it directly we can't get the exact value but roughly we can get it and for that we have this smith chart tool this smith chart tool is very essential for uh, any matching purposes or any amplifier design this is a great tool in ads so uh, we have already uh, given the s parameter value which already uh, from the questions so what we, you can do you can go to circle and in circle we have bilateral we have gp and ga and yes i have not explained anything about gp and ga gp is your uh, operating power gain circle and ga is your available power gain circle and i have not explained those things and i will definitely explain those things in my next or futures video but for now uh, 
GA is a circle like we have already uh, in my lecture 3 I have already introduced to you the constant gain circle and uh, there uh, we have GS and GL and you know the uh, things now right that every point of GS will give you one gamma S value every point on GL circle will give you a gamma L circle so same way in GP every point of GS circle will give you a gamma S point for that specific gain and every point of GP circle will give you a gamma L point for that specific circle. So for now if we choose gamma uh, G A value see we, we, we are seeing this circle okay and what we need we need it for maximum gain. So maximum gain could we can achieve up to 11.38 degree and this thing is same as of our MATLAB code also. In MATLAB also we are getting see maximum transistor gain possible 11.38. So we need maximum gain so what we'll do we'll uh, slide it down up to uh, 11.38 and this is the point. So center of this circle this maximum gain circle will be your gamma ms okay. So let us see what is our gamma ms from here and see, see it is 0.75 and angle is 1.76 and from our calculation in MATLAB it was 0.76 and 177 they are very close by that means in ADS we don't need to calculate all those things directly we can get it from here so uh, let us do one thing just write down this value in your notebook because we will need this thing in our uh, future matching part so it is 0.75 and angle is your 176.5 right so as this is a bilateral design so what we need to do we need to take this gamma s value from here and we need to find out our gamma out and as this is for maximum gain so our gamma l would be conjugate of gamma out and for your reference you see you this is your gamma out formula and in our gamma out formula we need to have the gamma s and just now we have uh, find out our gamma s from the smith chart tool so we need to use this formula we need we can uh, directly calculate it using our calculator but i don't i hate to use calculator so what i did i wrote one very small matlab script and there i'll find out the value for my gamma ml gamma l for maximum gain so this s parameter directly from the question uh, our gamma ms is 0 0.75 and the angle which we need is 176.5 we just need to run it once and see uh, your gamma your gamma l value is around 0 0.711 or 712 and angle is around 104 and what we have calculated are very close by angle is 104 we got to 103 and here it is 0 0.718 and we got it as 71.712 so roughly they are similar and why we are not uh, thinking about preci uh, precise point because in our ADS we have the optimizer also so if we don't achieve the same 11.38 or 11.37 dv gain then we can optimize our design so that's why we are not uh worrying about the precise point we are just roughly calculating it okay so now now what we will do let me close it uh, another thing like uh, i have uh, already given the file here in sn uh, as in snp box and one very good utility of this box is that you can check your s parameter directly from here see these are the s parameter and in our S2P file we have only one frequency information that's why it is showing for only 6 gigahertz and not for other uh, frequency points okay so we need to match this point and this point so for matching what we can do we can search here smith chart matching yeah and we need to take these smart components here and here you can just see how easy it is designing in ADS you don't need to have any physical smith chart in your hand but if you do once 
manually then you can appreciate the working of the software so that's why uh, in our colleges uh, they try to like they force us or they recommend us to do it in manual for once or two problem and then you can shift to this uh, wonderful software so one thing i want to emphasize here uh, see see uh, this is your circuit and here what we have we have gamma s perfect and here we have gamma l but we are matching it from here and here to here will go that means this part will act as our load that means we are seeing a reflection coefficient in this direction so that means we need to calculate our gamma s conjugate if this part is little confusing to you then see my lecture 5 i guess i'll give the link in my i button there i have explained the load and generator uh, confusion because generally it should be no i'm not confusing you here uh, anymore just go to lecture 5 and see there okay and here it is okay we don't need, need to change it because it is our it will work as our generator and this is our load so gamma s conjugate we have already find out our gamma s so let us match the circuits and for that tools smith chart and update and it got updated we have two smart components one is for input and another is for output so let's us select the first one for the input matching and if it is on this red is your admitted chart you can close it okay as of your uh, preference so first of all what we need we need to give the values for uh, zs and zl okay so zs would be your 50 because see uh, here we are having 50 this is your source 50 and zl will come directly from our gamma s and gamma s what we have already selected it is 0.75 and angle is 175.6 one uh, 76.5 so our zs and zl are fixed and uh, one thing uh, just now i have explained we need to take gamma s conjugate so i'll conjugate it okay so for matching purposes we can on this red circle or emitter circle i need to go from here up to this circle and then i can match it so i'll choose one transmission line i'll come here and one open stub to come here and if you want to see it you can zoom it and for unzooming this is the button and you can see i am matching it roughly why because i have the optimizer inbuilt in my ads and i can optimize it later for my desired value so for now just roughly i am calculating the matching circuits so after that and one thing you need to see we are doing it for 6 gigahertz by default it will be 1 gigahertz please uh, change it before your final uh, matching circuit design after that la la last option is will ads circuit and we'll click it here after clicking it here the circuit just we have designed it will got embedded to this smart component and you to see it you can click it here and you can pop in and you can see your circuit and to go back uh, you need to click here don't click cut so see how easy uh, to match the circuits and for output part we will again open our smithchart tool we will select the smart component for the output part we will delay the previous circuit we will check our frequency it is 6 gigahertz and now our zs will come directly from the from our calculated gamma l and calculated gamma l is 0.712 and the angle is 104 and your zl will be 50 let's unzoom it 
so now i need to match from here to here so you can select one uh, open stuff you can go up to here and then you can go up to here and there is no uniqueness okay so no unique solution are there so your matching circuit could be different from mine and you can move it here and there to uh, match it so it is very easy to use smithier tool and you, we just need to match it roughly and roughly it's done everything is okay we can click wheel radius circuit so matching is done now what we need to do we need to do the simulation and for simulation we need to have the uh, simulator and here we need a s parameter simulator so we need to go to simulation as parameter select sp come here and select your your required frequency range so for us it should be five to seven because six is our center frequency and, and simulate this gearbox is for simulation after simulation to see your result click it here s11 and s21 add dv okay okay and at six gigahertz we need to see around 11.38 so let us see are we achieving it and uh, yeah nearly it is 11.35 and we can do the optimization and actually i'll take the optimization in my next next lecture but see uh, we will design it in our rf board and in rf board we will have some discrete circuits and then we need to do soldering so there will have some non-idility so we need to take care of those non-idility also and again uh, the matching circuit we have just designed are all ideal part they are all uh, ide ideal uh, stubs but we need to design our stubs which according to our substrate so for now like we will use rt durad substrate and for, for this example an rt durad substrate have a epsilon r 2.2 then uh, its height should be 70 micro so we need to put those things and then we need to design the practical transmission line and these are not practical they are ideal so that means we need to transform our design from from here to the practical one so for that what we can do we can uh, open another schematics so click here new schematic and let us write it as practical schematics and what we'll do for our easy purpose we will control all control c we'll copy this and control v yeah we got it and now you go inside and copy it and these are just my method like I, I feel it easy you can choose your method also like this thing so as you feel easy copy it here and also go in and copy out these things delete this two thing okay so now now uh, for practical transmission line what we need to do we need to go to t line microstrip select it m sub will give you the substrate information so we need to define the substrate so for that uh, click m sub and bring it here uh, height of our, our substrate will be 508 micrometer epsilon r is 2.2 other thing let it be remain same t is the uh, thickness of the copper and in our substrate it is around 70 micrometer and you can get all the details of your substrate in the data sheet of your substrate so check that one uh, 10 delta i guess it is very low but for this case let it be this and okay so now what do we need we need a open stub this is your open stub 
and to rotate you need to uh, enter control R uh, then one transmission line and let's connect them now see uh, one difference uh, here we need to give W and L the width and length of our transmission line the physical things okay but in the ideal uh, trans transformer or transmission line which we are using earlier uh, they have these electrical items okay so that means we need to have uh, some tools which will convert this electrical quantity to the physical quantity and for that in our ADS we have a line calculator and so for that you need to go to tools and select this line calc and start it here again we need to provide details of our substrate so let give it uh, I prefer to use micrometer you can use your mill also 508 is 20 mil actually T is 70 micrometer and 10 delta is 5 then frequency is very important our operation frequency is 6 gigahertz okay and change these things to micrometer unit you can work on mil mills also no issue now our z0 is 50 and for first line it should be 65.97 so it is around 66 degree and click synthesize after clicking synthesize this thing will get auto populated so we got our value w and l so we'll copy them and we'll paste here and l is apply w will be same for all the lines so let's copy it Uh, length we need to calculate uh, length we need is 22.73 so we'll write here 22.73 synthesize and we got our new length and why were our w is same for all the stops because our z0 is fixed 50 ohms and our w directly in inversely proportional to the z0 so we are not changing that not that's why our w is w is not changing so we need to do same thing for the output port so let's do it so we have done with all the transformation now let's run it S11 and S21 add dv and r so see at 6 gigahertz we are getting around same uh, at uh, during our ideal one we got 0.35 now we are getting it 0.33 so it's okay only but main non idility will come due to shouldering and we need to take care of those things and also you see here we have one t junction so we need to add those things also so for that we need to select T from here see this is your T and we'll connect it here and here uh, around 0.5 millimeter cross 0.5 millimeter cross uh, one uh, piece of metal we need for shouldering so we'll have one micro strip line here whose W will be, uh, let it be millimeter, 0.5 and L also in millimeter, 0.5. These are the non ability which for sure will come when we will practically fabricate this circuit. So we need to take care of those things in our simulation only so that we can optimize it for our desired gain. Okay, 
now another thing you click here and you can see we have three w three w's are for this part this part and this part like uh, how how much w w or width of metal line it is seen in this side this side or that side and we may be confused like which which side is w1 and which side is w2 and w3 so if you are confused you just click help and here you can see it is written where uh, this this side is w1 this side is w3 and this side is w2 so we are clear about everything so our w3 and w2 are 0.1488.5 so let's do one thing let's copy it w2 is this and w3 is this and our w1 is 0.5 millimeter so 0.5 millimeter apply everything is okay we need to put same thing this side also so let's do it okay so we have done with uh, this and see uh, uh, this will be one chip of FET and that will have some pins and that pins should be shoulder on some metal piece and as the W of this metal line is around 1.4 millimeter that means we don't need to add any extra metal line here because we can easily shoulder the pin to this metal line so here no non identity will arrive and if it is arrive it will be very small so we don't need to consider it if you want you can consider it so i guess we can we can save to go for a simulation and your result will be and see uh, our gain signif not significantly but yeah it got dropped from 11 around 1 dv or 1.2 dv of gain got reduced and our s11 is also very bad because it should be more than minus 10 so now what we need to do now we need to optimize our circuit and for optimization we have some procedure but uh, i will take it up on my follow-up videos and if you have still seen up to this please subscribe to my channel as it is very motivating uh, factor to make uh, more videos okay so see you in next video bye bye